Welcome, dear friends and believers. This is Senior Pastor Michael Whitlock with the Nazarene Ministry coming to you from our studios in Las Vegas, Nevada. And today we have powerful verses from one of my favorite books in the Holy Scriptures, the book of John. Let's pray. Dear sacred and holy Father, in the blood and name of Messiah Yeshua, we come to you and we ask you, oh, holy Jesus Christ, we ask you to guide us, teach us, and help us to conquer every evil that has come against everyone who will hear this video so that they can be blessed in such an undeniable way that they must give the Father God, the Holy Savior, and the sacred Holy Spirit the glory. I pray this in the blood and name of Yeshua Messiah, the Mashiach, the Eloheinu, Jesus Christ, and Nazarene. Amen. Now, friends, please turn me, please turn with me, I should say. I am so excited if I have a little bit of trouble communicating, it's because the power of the Holy Spirit is upon me to the point of tears and wrath and anger and power and not evil, not evil. When we go through these verses, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Why am I angry? Why am I full of wrath? I am sick to death of seeing people pleading and begging God Almighty when he, through his son, God became the son to walk on earth. He is divine. He is divinity. Gave us the power to get our prayers answered every day, every night of our lives and Christians are still out there begging. And they even use the word wish. Wish? You should be as angry as I am because that is absolutely ridiculous. Now, turn to your Bibles to John, Yochanan in Hebrew, and we're going to start in one of my favorite chapters, and I hope it is for you as well, chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 53. Yeshua therefore said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, whenever he has to repeat himself like that, truly, truly, our ears should get so open, amplified open. Truly, truly. I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the son of Adam, that is our Messiah, Jesus Christ, and drink his blood, you possess no life in yourselves. We must receive the commanded communion. Let's read on. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood possesses everlasting life, and I shall raise him up in the last day. That is the promise. That is the gift. That is the treasure that we can walk knowing every day and night of our lives. Where are we going? We're going right into heaven. And Messiah will step right up and say, that one is mine. Satan, you cannot have that one. And on earth as it is in heaven, when we're taking his communion on a regular basis, we have the power of Messiah on earth as it is in heaven. Satan cannot touch us. He cannot stop or stall or hinder or speed bump or slow down our prayers. Your prayers should be atomic like a bomb, a nuclear bomb going off. And faster than microseconds, your prayer goes right to the throne of heaven. What is happening right now with most Christians? They pray, they beg, they cry, they wish. 
for something, and that's like slow molasses. That's like the slow dripping maple from a tree. No way. That's like a leaky faucet, and you want it to fill up a bucket overnight? It'll take weeks. I'm trying to teach you how to have nuclear, atomic power, pro praying that is absolute speed, shooting your prayers up to the throne of heaven and immediately getting answers to your prayers. Let's read on. For my flesh is truly food and my blood is truly drink. Now here it is. This is the big one. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood stays in me and I in him. Now this goes all the way back to the five books of Moses. God in us, us in him. Now, Messiah who is God on earth. So God is in us and we are in him. Now these verses that are coming up are going to blow your mind. So get ready. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me shall live because of me. Now, we live in the kingdom of heaven on earth as it is in heaven. We are the living, walking embodiment of the Messiah on earth. Now, I'm not talking about, I think I'm Jesus Christ. No, what I'm talking about, I'm just a man, but I become more of a man when I receive Messiah in me. Now, he is as one with me as I am as one with him. He's in me, I'm in him, and I'm empowered to do all of his will, all of his work, and all I got to do is surrender to it. Sacred Messiah Yeshua, Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, come and live in me, dwell in me. And you want to make a physical key to that? To give him the key to open the door of who you are, what you are, to open up the key to the door of your heart, your spirit, soul, mind, and body, and finances? You take communion. Now, let's turn quickly. I want you to turn to John 8. And we're going to read at John 19. Therefore, they said to him, this is the Sadducees and Pharisees and all these people that were grumbling and they're trying to just make a mess. Here we go. Therefore, they said to him, where is your father? Yeshua answered, You know neither me nor my father. If you knew me, you would have known my father also. These words Yeshua spoke in the treasury, teaching in the set-apart place, and no one laid hands on him because his hour had not yet come. Now, here's the point. No one can lay hands on you. You are empowered. You are protected. Now, Messiah had to die for us. But the protection that's on you is for all of your life. Because you don't have to die on the cross. He died for us. He died for me. I don't have to die on a cross. All right, let's turn quickly. Now we are in John 14. Yeshua said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He is God on earth. God became a man through the Holy Spirit, impregnating the Virgin Miriam or Mary in English to have a doorway through her womb into this earth 
to show us that a man in a physical body could live and breathe and talk and heal and expel permanently all evil, all demons, all devils, all rulers of dark places, all uncleanliness and filth, all evil can be conquered and he showed it to us and demons, devils and possession. What does he do? I cast you into those pigs and the pigs ran to the water and died. And that's where they belong, back to hell permanently in the body of pigs. Now, here we go. If you had known me, you would have known my father too. From now on, you know him and have seen. You want to hear the father? Take communion on a regular basis. That way Christ is inside you and you will receive him in you. He's in you. He's one with the Father. And you will know the voice of the Father God Almighty. Philip said to him, Master, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Now I'm going to... Yeshua said to him, have I been with you so long and you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. And how do you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak from myself, but the Father who says in me, I'm sorry, the Father who stays in me does his works. Now, this is what I'm talking about. You take communion. Messiah, who is the Father on earth, is in you. You are in the Father. How could you not hear his voice and destiny for you, purpose for you? How? It, I walk with the Father God Almighty. I walk with him in the cool of the evening. Why? Because our Savior conquered Satan, took back the keys of the kingdom. We now have the same relationship that Adam and Eve had with our Father, who walked with them in the cool of the evening. I walk with him. I talk with him. He hears me. He talks back to me. He tells me, here's what I need you to do, son. Here's how you can be the ultimate obedience to me. Here's what I want you to sacrifice. Here's what I want you to do. Take communion. Teach people about communion. Now, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Otherwise, believe me because of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he shall do also. Now, you got Christians, you got Jews who are begging God for answers. And if Messiah is in you and you are in Messiah, you don't have to beg. You have immediate answers to your prayers. Did Moses have months to wait for the water to open so they could cross on dry ground? When Pharaoh's army is ready to absolutely destroy them, every man, woman, and child? No, he needed a miracle right now. God told him, come to the edge of the rock, hold up your staff and pray. Take that staff, touch the water, and see what happens right now, miracles. And that's what all of you should be believing in with an expectancy that will accept nothing else. This begging has got to stop. I have people calling me constantly, prophet, pastor, pray for me. I need money. I gotta tell you, this is just beyond understanding. 
You don't need me to pray for you. If you have Messiah in you as I have Messiah in me, you every day of your life will have blessings. I had blessings today, financially. I had blessings yesterday. And it, yesterday was from donations. Today was from my bank, and I got the letter right here, telling me clearly that, and it is the truth of God's word, there is no loss in divine mind. When God gives me something, I cannot lose it. People tried to hack me, rip me off, scam me, and con me, and the bank figured it out, and they've returned the money to my bank account. I got the letter right here, today. That's today's miracle, as I'm walking in the cool of the evening to go to my mailbox and get my blessing. I go to that mailbox with the ultimate expectation to get a blessing every day. And I have proof of it right here. Now let's read on. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he shall do also. That means me, a man, you, a man, a woman, a child. There are children that have more faith than their parents, more faith than most pastors that I know. And when they pray, because they have that childlike faith, their prayers are answered all the time. So we read on, and greater works than these he shall do because I go to my Father and whatever you ask in my name, that I shall do in order that the Father might be esteemed in your translation, it'll say glorified in the Son, the Holy Messiah. All right, if you ask whatever in my name, I shall do it. Now that's a promise and it's a command. I shall do it. Believe this. If you love me, you shall guard my commands. There it is right there. There it is right now. Now what are the commands of Messiah? Eat my holy communion so that I can completely come inside you and protect you and provide for you. Your wants, your needs, your desires. And I'm not talking about, I got these people who are calling me on a regular basis and I bless them all the time, but it saddens me and it angers me that they're asking me for $20, $30, now, imagine this with me. God factually, completely created this universe. Can you even picture in your mind the kind of blessing that God wants to give you? Turn right now with me to Malachi 3. And I'm going to tell you why most of you are not getting your blessings. We are commanded by God, who is Messiah on earth. We are commanded by God, Messiah on earth. Read Malachi 3. Let's go down to verse 7. From the days of your fathers, you have turned aside from my laws. That's the commands and did not guard them. Turn back to me, and I shall turn back to you, said Yahovah of hosts. Your translation, King James, will say God Almighty, or God of the sacred messengers or angels. All right, I'm reading from the Hebrew. All right, but you said, in what shall we turn back? Would a man rob Elohim, that means God Almighty. Yet you are robbing me. But you said, in what have we robbed you? In the tithe and the offering. I tithe 
every income that comes to me, I tithe and offer. Now, I've said it before. Usually, on a regular basis, the Father God Almighty asks me to send my tithe and offering to Migdal Or, which is an orphanage in Israel, as it's pronounced properly, or we would say Israel in America. Sometimes he'll intercede for something else, someone else. And that's cool with me because guess what? I know he's talking to me and I know he's directing me and I know that because I'm tithing and offering, I am tied into the promise of God Almighty himself that I will be blessed. Let's read on. There is nothing more powerful than the scriptures of the sacred Father God Almighty. And it says, you have cursed me with a curse. When you steal God's money, his 10%, and a small offering, I always make sure I give 15%. So I'm tithing an offering on a regular basis. And God has at times asked me for more. And what did I do? I was obedient. You know why I was obedient? Because I love God. I love his son and the Holy Spirit. So if he asked me for 50%, I give him 50%. If he asked me for 100%, and I've done it over and over again, I give 100%. And it's just that simple. Now, you have cursed me with a curse, for you are robbing me, this nation, all of it. And that includes America, that includes Canada, all of South America, Europe, all of this planet is robbing God. There are so few. When I was working in ministry for Rod Parsley in Columbus, Ohio, I read a international report that only 17% of the people that went to church were tithing. And I'm not talking about offering. I'm talking about just tithing 10%. All the Christian churches out there, no wonder I got so many people call me. Last night, I was up from early in the morning till early in the following morning, more than 24 hours with calls of emergencies. Help me, pastor, I need $500 for my child in the hospital. Help me, pastor, I need $20. Help me, pastor, I need $30. Help me, pastor, I need $100. Help me, pastor, I need 20. I don't know where else to turn. Help me, pastor. I mean, it went on all night long. And I told each one of them, why is it you need my help when the Father God Almighty, if you will communicate with him properly, he wants to give you, now let me read what he wants to give you. Bring all the tithes, that means you, me, everybody, we tithe in my house, into the storehouse. What is that? Church, temple, all of you Jews out there that are ripping God off and not giving him money that he is owed, no wonder your prayers don't get answered. No more. No wonder there's so much anti-Semitism. If you were doing and living the laws of God as I do, you would be safe, protected, and people would see you coming down the street with your yarmulke, with your tallit, and they would be praising God Almighty that you are the chosen ones instead of wanting to kill you, protest against you, they would be praying for Israel to win this war. Now let's read on. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse and let there be food in my house. What did my Messiah say that the temple was? My father's house of prayer. Notice the word house. And please prove me in this. This is the only place in the entire scriptures that God himself says, test me, prove me, 
and I will show you something that will shock you to your core and amaze you. So it goes on and it says, Proof me in this, said Yahovah of hosts. Your translation is going to say God Almighty. Whether I, or God of the holy angels, whether I do not open for you the windows of heavens and shall pour out for you a boundless blessing. Boundless. Now guess what? All of those people last night who were asking me for money all night long, they don't belong to this ministry. For all I know, they don't belong to any church. But they're calling to me like I'm some kind of easy mark that they can scam out of money. And believe me, they're out there and they're trying to, and I'm warning you pastors, they are trying to scam ministries out of money. And I'm going to give you one example. That one lady called me up from over in Europe. She, needed, she said she needed money for her child in hospital. I looked up the policies of hospitals where she was at and they pay for everything, everything. Why she asked me for $500 when they pay for everything? Cause it's a scam. But she didn't know that I would take a few minutes on my phone and ask about where she was at and does the taxation that she pays it pays for their health care completely. Not like America, completely. I got these other people that are asking me for money and I know full well that they work. And they're asking me for money. They're cursed. I hate to say that, but they're cursed. They're robbing the ministry of God. Therefore, they're robbing God Almighty. So I'm going to tell you this right now, boldly. You want me to answer your prayers, and I am an atomic prayer warrior. I am nuclear. Because he is in me, I am in him. you got to be a member of this ministry, and then we'll help you. And I have helped I just recently, to a lady and her daughter, who definitely are members of this ministry and needed extra money for food, and she happens to be temporarily working very little hours, and we sent her out without question $100. And just a few days before that, she needed money. We sent it. We sent her, and I can prove it, over seventy dollars to her. And if she calls again as a member of this ministry, we'll help her again. And what does she do? She ties and offers into this ministry even the help we send her, and that's not income out of the kindness of her heart, I send her a hundred bucks, she sends back 10. Is she blessed? By this holy scripture, she is absolutely blessed. Remember the lesson that Messiah taught us. Some will be blessed 30 fold, some 60, some 100 fold. That woman, her end of poverty is coming. And she's going to be blessed. I proclaim it, declare it a hundredfold. And do you even have an idea what a fold is? Well, I'm going to tell you what I learned from John Hagee, one of the great teachers of our time. One fold is like a thousand. So a hundredfold 
100,000. She is going to have her life so blessed and so turned around. And I know she is promised, committed to this ministry. Once she starts getting that big money, she'll be tithing and offering to this ministry. And it's just that simple. I'm going to give you another example. I have an IT guy. My IT guy, he ties and offers into this ministry every time he gets a dime. Now, he came to me and he goes, Pastor, you have background in this area, so on and so on. Pray for me to get a better job. I'm not making very much money. Well, of course I'm going to pray for him because he ties and offers into the ministry. I prayed for him. What happened? He has gotten four promotions. He left one job that was not recognizing his gifts, his talents, his commitment. He didn't miss work. He was always early and on time. He did his job, and he's a brilliant person with computers. So his report writing and stuff is just awesome. I prayed for him and got doors open for him that led him to a much better job. And within 30 days, not only did he get a huge raise per hour, he got full, absolutely full insurance benefits. And I'm talking about eyes, ears, teeth, full benefits, totally paid for by his job. That's the kind of mercy, grace, and favor that God wants to extend to you and me and anyone that will truly stop stealing from God. And that's what this message is about. Now, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, there are people out there that belong to churches, and they are tithing. Bless them, Holy Father, in a huge, enormous, abundant way. And I pray that all evil is bound back from them and all the plans of Satan are broken so that the money you intend for them to have is quickened unto them. And Father, I pray for all those poor people who call themselves Christians, who call themselves reborn and saved, and they're stealing for you. They are stealing your money. They do not tithe and offer. And yet, they expect ministries to help them out. Father God Almighty, I pray for these people that their spiritual eyes are open, their spiritual ears are open, their spiritual heart is open to what they should be doing in your son's precious name. And I just read from John, one we pray in his sacred and blessed and holy name, this prayer must be answered. And I add to it Matthew 7, 7, ask and you shall receive. And I blood soak this prayer in the blood and sacrifice of the Messiah because he took our poverty to the cross. Amen. Until we meet again, the happy trails to you. This is Senior Pastor Michael Whitlock with the Nazarene Ministry, Las Vegas, Nevada. You need to call us 702-588-9237. Amen.